All right. Is there? Oh, yeah. Yes, okay. Did. Fantastic. Hello. 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 Yes. Thank you for joining. How are you? How are you? Yeah. Yeah. Sama sama. Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Now that we are complete, I would like to uh, start the panel. And first, I will introduce the topic very briefly, and then I will introduce each one of you. So sure. uh, first of all, so, uh, thank you for joining the panel. I'm Martin Schulze, and I run the art nonprofit called Public Delivery. And today, we're talking about how the history of Asian art has long been dominated by the effects of European colonization. In this panel, we're asking how can we open a new chapter? We will also see that there's not just one stereotypical Asian artist identity, but rather many complex individual artist identities. Today, we have three different perspectives from three different Asian artists. And the first one is Ara Mayani, born in 1961 in Indonesia. Can you say hello? Hello, Aramayani. everybody. Yes, Perfect. hello. Thank you for inviting me to join this uh, webinar. So Ara Mayani grew up under the military regime in Indonesia. And while she was at art school, she produced controversial art, which earned her the death threats from the conservative Muslim community. She got kicked out from school and later imprisoned by the military regime. She had to flee to Australia and then lived in many different countries. For this reason, she describes herself as a 40-year nomad. She has been teaching at the University of Passau in Germany for the past 10 years. And today she will speak about the project she's doing there. I think her project is especially interesting because the common narrative usually goes that the Western art world heavily influences the Asian art world. In this case, and in many others, it is actually the other way around. Second, we have Funa Ye, a Chinese artist in her mid-30s. Can you say hello? Hello. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me sure. to this panel. Funa Ye is based in Beijing, and today she will talk about how a visit to Disneyland changed her mind about contemporary art. She studied at two prestigious schools, the first being the Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing, where she's teaching right now, and St. Martin's in London. Growing up in China, she saw the slowly disappearing values of family and society and has used those topics in her work. Funa Ye takes a critical stance against the never-ending stream of information that we are bombarded with and also says that art must be political. And third, we have Harry Dono, born in 1960. Hello. Hello, everyone. Would you to invite me for this seminar? So Harry Dono is also Indonesian, and he's deeply influenced by Buddhism and Taoism, which is an ancient Chinese philosophy. His approach towards art is fundamentally different from the Western approach. In fact, he challenges the Western hegemony of art by heavily relying on elements of Indonesian culture in his art. He also puts localness above globalization, and today he will speak more about it. All of the three artists do have different approaches, but also surprisingly, they have a lot in common. Collaboration is a central topic in their work and that makes it distinctive Asian, where the community is much more important than the individual. So we, we would like to start with Ara Mayani. Please introduce your PASAR project. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, yes, uh, I, I would like to... Um, explain about my work um, teaching in Passau University in uh, Germany. Um, oh, sorry, it's raining. I hope it's, it doesn't disturb my voice. It's fine. Um, okay. Yeah, I've uh, been teaching there for the uh, last 10 years. Um, and uh, this is not an art school, it's a department of Southeast Asia, Faculty of Philosophy. Yeah, and uh, the reason why uh, they invited me is because they're interested in my practice that they are associated with the so-called transdisciplinary approach, 
because they wanted to implement this kind of approach. Uh, as the academic system before um, is more like, uh, you know, where discipline is separated from one to another, uh, they realize that uh, there is also a weak point on this kind of approach beside the, its strength, of course. And um, yeah, and for me also, uh, at first, it was so interesting kind of uh, practice and uh, method because although I already practice it, but I uh, didn't really start from theory at the beginning. Uh, I just um, deal with uh, life itself that I have to deal with, which is quite complex kind of situation, right? But then, yeah, since I have been teaching in uh, this university, so I got to learn also about um, what is the academic problems or academic system problems with this uh, what uh, separated discipline, you know, of uh, uh, knowledge, right? Anyway, so my practice also is not just limited to theoretical level only, but also how to implement it in reality. That is also important kind of point on my practice, okay? And that's what also make uh, them interested in my practice because the head of the department, department named uh, Professor Rudiger Korb. He explained me that that's one of the problem in academic system, uh, in German in particular, that, um, you know, the theory and the implementation sometimes seems to be uh, disconnected in uh, academic practice. Anyway, Mm, so I got to learn about this uh, while I'm working there and this is also a very uh, good kind of uh, uh, experience of teaching and learning and uh, they are of course interested in um, culture also uh, from Asia where I come from and uh, as you can see in my work that I'm also um, referring myself to uh, cultural roots, my own cultural roots, but I reinterpret it within the context of today. So basically, I uh, connect the so-called um, ancient wisdom with the new knowledge or science and technology. And um, this is what uh, make my colleague in the university in Germany are very much interested because they say this is very rare kind of you know practice and actually um, last year there's a uh, two professor from Lansu University they also would like to invite me to teach there because they are also interested in my kind of approach so but yeah because of pandemic I have we have to wait but this is also I mean a way for me to learn about what is going on in this modern system, you know, or Western system in particular, uh, where, you know, in general, uh, people think that this is like a very um, high kind of, you know, culture. Uh, that's why uh, it's considered to be uh, seen as dominant because it's like, perfect like almost no problems there or any disruption but actually yeah there is uh, some problems there and uh, people have to deal with that I mean I know uh, some of my friends in the West especially my colleagues from uh, the university they can uh, share you know the kind of uh, uh, understanding and knowledge with me because uh, in my practice I don't make a kind of uh, distance between me as Asian or my colleagues or my friends uh, from Europe or from the West. Um, I'm 
referring myself to the philosophy of my ancestor that uh, seeing human as as equal you know it doesn't matter what is your, the color of your skin the belief or cultural background we are all the same and that's what i have been trying to implement within the community based kind of art project that i have been doing uh, since 2006 until today it's still ongoing and then i give you one example of the work with my uh, students from pasa university uh, german students for sure and the two of my students uh, has been working in indonesia in java uh, this uh, his name is steven and max i call them uh, and they have been helping the community in jogjakarta and then in another city in demak and uh, they practice also somehow following my kind of method but then of course they also have to deal with uh, yeah foreign say foreign culture right that they have to learn first until they can be in dialogue and interact and uh, create something really positive for for themselves you know for togetherness yeah and uh, yeah, this maybe, is maybe something you can, that maybe you can explain a little bit more uh, and then we let Afuna Ye talk first now okay then yes you. sure thank you yeah thank so you. this uh, um, my kind of approach is also known as holistic approach right where uh, basically we are trying to understand what is happening what is the culture what is the way of thinking basically and then our role is to stimulate the creativity you know a stimulator of creativity but then of course if we want to do a good work we have to understand their way of thinking the culture and their kind of belief system right. yeah and i've been working with various groups uh with this various uh, cultural and faith backgrounds muslim islamis um hindus buddhist catholic christian i mean in uh pasa for example i am i have been working also with the jesuit priests Uh, to deal with this um, issue or uh, dealing with the uh, muslim refugees you know so my role is becoming a bridge between two different culture to get understanding and that's what i've been doing also for example in tibet protocols also in last 10 years i try to uh, become bridge and have this a uh, dialogue between two groups of people that has some maybe problems and this is also what i've been doing uh, between israel and palestinian and this is still ongoing kind of project and this project started two years ago i'm supposed to go there but because of, of the pandemic so we're just doing it online so far okay i hope i uh, made myself clear enough great funa could you please uh talk about your trip to disneyland <laughs> yeah thank you uh, and thank you uh aham yani i i think uh there is a uh, many thing i'm curious about your uh, <laughs> your your work because i'm also now uh, uh teaching in kafa central academy of fine art and uh, there is many uh like teaching method i think is very very good uh, for inspire my my teaching sure. and uh yeah i want to talk Thank about you. uh uh most recent thing uh recently i'm just very first time i visit uh disneyland in shanghai which is just uh, open a few years ago and uh after playing all day uh in disneyland and uh, uh during night there is a firework show with a light and a projection uh event like and the, at the time i i i found out i suddenly cried in the that uh uh amazing firework show because i saw 
those familiar sounds, and I saw all the car cartoon character I loved, and uh, all the uh, princess I I'm fond of in in early childhood. They all appear in that event, in that live show, and uh, I can't stop my crying. But this crying also make me kind of awake or aware of something because uh, during the time I realize I have something uh, is who uh, is uh, actually inside uh, by other things. It's like um, uh, the, the input uh, value of, uh, of what I like, what I should do in, in this, uh, in my mind, things very, uh, very childhood. And I realize this kind of uh, uh, utopia thinking, uh, because I read one book is uh, wrote by uh, Lois Marine, and uh, he mentioned about Disneyland is like a generated uh, utopia. And uh, this utopia of um, my, uh, in my mind, uh, how the utopia look like is totally in this Disneyland style. <laughs> it's, it's like they have a castle, they have a princess, this kind of thing, but it's never appear in my real life. And it's, uh, it's nothing to do with my real, uh, like neighbor, or my real community, because we don't have a castle, we don't have a princess, we don't have this kind of uh, culture. But uh, this thing is uh, uh, from things where a uh, very little child we we already have so much uh, this kind of idea in mind, um, and this kind of remind me about uh, uh, the very first time I went to MoMA and uh, and probably Tate. Uh, at the, the at the beginning, I'm very excited about. Uh, Mm, I see all the masterpieces I admire, and I learned from art history uh, about uh, those artists' the original piece. And uh, after I visit all the uh, museum, I suddenly realized something is uh, uh, is uh, what is uh, like. Uh, this is something they giving to us. <laughs> this is something. Uh, 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 they insert the the seed in our heart, and I I, I suddenly realize this is uh, nothing to do with me, but I believe it so much. <laughs> so uh, our knowledge system and the the, the process uh, the perception of art is a uh, is kind of a, a Western centered uh, system, and uh, this is a kind of affect kind our of behavior and our our uh, thinking and uh, I imagine uh, if I uh, acting as a Disneyland princess it's probably like the fake one <laughs> it's it's probably like a fake iPhone because I'm actually never became uh, never be um, the same as uh, what they did uh, and what their life will be, because I'm kind of we, we, what we call an unoriginal. Um, and I think because of this uh, uh, recent years, there is a very uh, uh, controversial uh, talk about this uh, uh, system, like the new uh, liberalism, which we seems becoming a uh, common sense, but now they are strong, strongly challenged because of the pandemic and because of this uh, 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 rising of a local uh, uh, localness system. So we are actually in art world also face a very different uh, like uh, thing in 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 time and uh, now. It's, it's kind of uh, people start to uh, start to thinking about what is the local culture and what is the value of a, uh, of a, um, our own 
contemporary art system because this system can be not um, uh, because contemporary uh, art because system is art. actually coming from the globalization and coming from the, the thinking of neoliberalism. But uh, if these things start to break down, so how does we can make, uh, what, what kind of art we make and what is the imaginary audience we face to? Uh, and uh, if, if the Western system is the authority, is it our third world countries or is it Asia uh, culture? Is they, this contemporary art become a lesser cultural colony? <laughs> but uh, this is a question. Actually, I, I still think uh, I still think um, globalization is uh, is kind of uh, unbeatable. Uh, but uh, in somehow we have to face our identity. We have to face our uh, original thought and. Uh, I realize what is my role model and what is uh, those Chinese women's face uh, like. Uh, Very in, powerful. In, yeah, yeah, in public eyes. So uh, in my art practice, I also talk about uh, this kind of uh, issue about uh, uh, how I, Asian women's uh, appearance in public eyes, especially uh, in um, mass media like uh, TV program and uh, uh, internet culture. How does uh, those uh, uh, women celebrity uh, become controversial and how does people see them as uh, different uh, faces? And uh, uh, in, in my working method, is one of method is um, is to acting as different person. So myself becoming a a, a material to use for uh, pretending to be some some uh, different uh, characters. And uh, uh, in a group of my work is also uh, to reflect this. Uh, uh, Asian uh, women characters in different perspective. And uh, uh, I was working uh, in different country as well. So I acting uh, different uh, Asian women in actually in different place. So I made some work in German as well. I'm making some work in, in American, but uh, I always using uh, different cultures, uh, actors to acting, uh, the typical Chinese, uh, drama or typical Chinese, uh, TV programs role. <laughs> so, so, and I'm, I myself is acting those, uh, very controversial tragedy women in Chinese culture. So, I don't know, maybe it's approach of, uh, uh, for this uh, topic. Yes, fantastic. Thank you. Maybe uh, Harry Dono, could you speak yeah. next about your art practice? Maybe based on the other two panelists. Yes, thank you, Martin. Thank you, everyone. Um, <clears throat> well, um, um, I studied art in, in Indonesia in Yogyakarta in 1980 and I dropped out uh, in 1987, three months before I graduated. So I don't have any certificate at all. <clears throat> but now I teach at the um, postgraduate student in, in, in the Mission Institute, <clears throat> in the Mission Art Institute. Um, as uh, they call me Prof. Eridono, that, that means provocator, not professor. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> my, my duty in art school is only to provoke the logic of students, not the about logic of their students. matter. So uh, when I was in Europe in 1990s, in Basel, Switzerland, I realized they, they, they call me artists from Southeast Asia because uh, Southeast Asia is, uh, I can see from Europe, they call me Southeast Asia. <coughs> if I see from Indonesia, they, I cannot see Indonesia as South, Southeast Asia because uh, we just in the uh, place between Asia and Pacific. 
region. <coughs> so um, uh, when I was student, I learned a little bit about mandala that based on the three-dimensional mandala sculpture or, or um, the temple we call Borobudur <coughs> that in this concept of Borobudur actually um, uh, in the mandala we don't have any concept of subject and object so in the concept of subject and object actually uh, we call like in Tao teaching or in Taoism that everything in macrocosmos like water air fire and earth and ether actually exist in our body as our microcosmos so we and nature actually equal in my mind probably the essence of colonialism appear because of the distance between subject and object because of this um um, I can learn from Borobudur Temple that actually this is a three level of of the temple. You know, one basic we call Kamadatu, and the other we call Rupadatu, and the other in the last part we call Arupadatu. Uh, this is about our materialism life, and also about extent and also the essence. And <clears throat> from this, I try to be. Uh, a part of the people, so, uh, the, the international society, <coughs> without any discrimination. And um, according with the book of Gaffian Mencius about uh, the the travel of the, the Admiral Cheng Ho uh, travel in, in, in many places in the continent um, before Kambut and before uh, other. Uh, traveler um, actually um, Cheng Ho Cheng He uh, uh, in China I don't know the spelling but Cheng He or Cheng Ho um, didn't di didn't colonize any places even give give inspiration about Renaissance in Europe and for me this is uh, the good um, how in, in in Asia actually. Um, the knowledge, yeah, the knowledge is um, uh, try to sharing, to share and to give to the other. Like in India, in uh, Nalanda University, um, when Atisha traveled to to, uh, to Sumatra, at the time they call as uh, Swarnadwipa, as the continent, and Atisha learned to his teacher in Moro Jambi. So many people think Muara Jambi is a part of Sriwijaya Kingdom, but actually this is a university that the Malay culture based on Buddhist religion uh, spit out in Asia Pacific area. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the knowledge of the culture actually <coughs> uh, during the colonization, we learn in, from our teacher that their, their textbooks are from the West and and everything is uh, separately between the discipline, the art discipline. But when we learn from the people in tradition, there is no uh, discip uh, art discipline from each, each, uh, each discipline of art, like music, uh, puppet, and sculpture. There is no any separately. So um, we try to find our formula about what we call as contemporary art. And so in, in early 1990s, when we learn about about modern art, we try to make mistake in purpose to become contemporary. So the concept of contemporary art is how to explore the mistakes in purpose from modern art as contemporary art. Because in our formula, like in tradition, everything is all together in art discipline. So this is uh, how we try to share again to many people in the world about this formula that in modern art they they kill many different kind or to put in the boxes for every kind of of art and the meaning of art is not easy like only like fine art but about the function about the we call as 
uh, in in Java we call as uh, Kagunan. So it's you know, the Kagunan is very different. Like like guru is different like teacher because guru is a person when we try to find him or her, but teacher is the person who teach in the one institution that we learn. We we just the facilities we only learn from them, but guru is different meaning in right. the terminology of Asia. I think maybe, like that, maybe you can maybe, talk a bit about your project with communities and how you work with them, because I think that puts that makes you your work much different from a Western approach. Yes, uh, one in 1992 when we have the binar, we, we make the bina. Bina in Indonesian meaning is wild. So at the time I make the uh, wild horse dancing, and I I work with the the grave diggers, about 25 grave diggers in Kunchen graveyard. So they never they never learned dancing, but um, when I was in Berlin in 19 91 or 1990 i bought a gas mask uh, in the in the flea market uh, I, i bought about 15 gas masks and i use for the dancer to use this because we we have we, we are in the military regime at the time in 1992 and also about the, the environment issue so we we perform in the front of sultan palace yeah, as our demonstration that we didn't use the uh, we didn't use the permission to police because this is like the street, street musician they don't need uh, the paper to, to show to the policeman and uh, <clears throat> in one one village we call Virobrajan, uh, maybe about more than 50 people participate in our performance and uh, we need the catalog to tell about the um, uh, how um, art can go to the people, not the people has to go to see art. So we go to the public as our tradition, not as a beggar, but but contribution about the new consciousness to people. So um, we learn each other from the local genius from people, not we think that we are more clever than them, than they are. So um, actually, from 1990s, we tried to to make provocation about how the visual artist can make performance or theater, and the musician can make a painting exhibition or sculpture, or go to different uh, cross culture uh, discipline, like that, Martin. Fantastic. Maybe uh, Aramayani. Maybe you can talk about your community projects in Tibet. Maybe uh, for next. Five, six minutes. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, I uh, begin to work with the Tibetan in uh, Tibet Plateau in 2010 and still ongoing until today. The reason why I work there is because there's the call in my heart. As I understood, the Tibet Plateau is a very significant area in the uh, regi region, within the context of region, but also global context. You know, uh, Tibet Plateau is known as Asia Water Tower and also known as the Third Pole, yeah? So after North Pole and South Pole, this is one of the largest ice fields on Earth. And with this climate change condition, you know, um, the Climate is rising and then, yeah, the ice, the glacier is mel melting really fast and creating catastrophe of, of floods and landslide all over Asia continent. Maybe um, our friend um, later also can uh, explain what happened in China every uh, summertime, there's floods and yeah, stuff like that. Anyway, uh, so I got the support from um, monastic group, uh, especially the uh, Glupa sect, which is actually led by the Dalai Lama, and uh, also ordinary or lay people. And we managed to do a um, few projects, important projects to keep the balance of ecology up there. 
like uh, managing the garbage, recycle, uh, planting trees, reviving organic farming, reviving nomadic culture and lifestyle, and then creating alternative energy like of course, solar panels in China is uh, becoming common, uh, but also from the water, because there is this source of water right up there. And um, after five years, we've been working on this uh, project and we managed to do all these kind of uh, tasks. And then uh, actually Chinese government approved and support the project until today. Yeah, so then, uh, yes, my role is also, uh, besides stimulator of creativity, is to become a kind of bridge in between the two groups. So there's a kind of a dialogue and build a kind of understanding with each other. Because sometimes maybe the cultural gap or a belief system can create a kind of a conflict or if Maybe it is manipulated by some people who are obsessed by power and money usually. Uh, but yeah, if we are willing to sort of, you know, open ourselves and try to do something together, to live together peacefully, that's also possible. And this is could, what creativity could, means for me. Could you talk yeah. specifically about how, how it is different from a Western approach? Yep, yes, uh, it is different. Uh, maybe this will be uh, called a holistic kind of approach. But yeah, what does that mean, right? So in my, my practice, I don't want to just stuck into theoretical level, but it means that, well, in uh, uh, old terms, uh, there's this kind of simple explanation. They say between your thought your speech and your action, it has to be connected. That's how they explain this kind of, you know, practice. Yeah, and this is what is uh, kind of heritage from ancient time that is uh, still relevant for today, you know. Uh, and uh, what I have understood so far in the West, this is also what I learned from my students. I mean, my German students and other students also that I work with. For example, recently I was giving a, a talk in Rittfeld Academy and um, um, Leiden University in Holland. And yes, that's uh, what I have learned uh, that you know, the modern kind of uh, approach and way of thinking is somehow a bit stuck in this so-called binary oppositional kind of, you know, system where you see things in black and white kind of, you know, uh, way while the ancient philosophy is not like that from my ancestor anyway. So there is this uh, recognition of uh, oppositional power in nature, but also it is also connected. It's not just like simple black and white, right and wrong, good and bad, you know? We have to understand it deeper. So then we can somehow uh, understood what is the meaning and then we can become wise in dealing with our problems. Okay, I hope thank I have made it clear enough. Yes, thank you. So. Uh, last five minutes, maybe Funa, maybe uh, you can talk about your projects with the ethnic scribes that you are doing. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, actually, uh, from this idea of a uh, uh, contemporary artwork uh, or approach, I think it's, it's, it's kind of impossible to to bring this uh, systematic uh, things change uh, from from top to bottom, but there is a uh, there's another way is from bottom to up, and it's what uh, uh, what the possibility are, and uh, it's uh, how I how I interested in, and uh, what I'm interested in, what I uh, is called uh, new folk art. It's kind of a combination with uh, uh, traditional folk art and the folk community. 
uh, with these uh, contemporary uh, subculture groups uh, creation. So in China, there is uh, uh, many uh, migrant workers and uh, uh, local people has been influenced by different uh, uh, new uh, global uh, culture, like uh, like uh, there is some subculture of uh, uh, local youngs. They they playing as uh, uh, look like a uh, uh, punk or uh, visionary a Japanese gram rock star, but uh, they actually living in a very low condition. But uh, they have a very stylish look and they make uh, incredible things. What we call it, shamatu uh, smart groups, and uh, I uh, recently my practice is uh, collaborate with this kind of group of people, and uh, try to make their work as a uh, uh, like bring their uh, culture into uh, art creation. So I work. Uh, we basically make a um, art gallery becoming a hair salon and make different people's hairstyle and uh, trying to understand those communities' uh, daily behavior like they are always joining the local uh, roller skating clubs. So we actually make this uh, art center into a roller, sky roller skating uh, club and uh, yeah. to make and, uh, all the living uh, like... Uh, uh, all the the inter entertainment into this uh, 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 art creation uh, scene, and when people come in, they can actually participate and they can try to uh, learn and understand the this community's uh, culture, and uh, all those uh, uh, participate uh, uh, from uh, from this kind of culture. They actually. Coming from also from those uh, Southeast China ethnic group community, and uh, they are uh, because they they need to make a living, so they migrate to South uh, City to uh, to to uh, work. And uh, but uh, I think is uh, this kind of subculture or. Art is a call back to their own identity and trying to find their own voice by different, uh, mm, by elaborate the the appearance or the the activity. So it's a it's a kind of combined research and uh, and uh, 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 participation art practice. Yeah. Would would you call this contemporary art? What you're doing, or is it a new category? Um, I actually, um, I what I doing is just bring to bring this uh, uh, folk art. What we call it folk art, while well, we call it an unnecessary, or what people think this is not a um, not a high art kind of form into this art system. So because uh, contemporary art gallery always uh, clean, always have uh, this kind of typical form of, uh, of behavior, but what we did is kind of break this boundary between, uh, between our uh, life art, like, like hair salon, like nail art, like uh, this kind of uh, uh, what we call it uh, feminine or unimportant or this kind of uh, thing into a uh, uh, serious art system <laughs> and uh, trying to trying to break the boundary and trying to blur the 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 context between uh, like a uh, folk art and art yeah right okay I think we're done for today now the time is already over <laughs> thank you okay. thank you okay, I will uh, yeah thank you all for coming today and for talking and spending time here yeah nice thank to you. meet you all <laughs> okay yes, I will nice exit the stream now you. okay bye, bye.
Bye. Bye.